Hello and welcome to another free online homework help video from alexplaysehelp.com. My name is Alex and I'm here to help. Today I'm here to help Dan in Florida. He submitted to me an invalid proof and is wondering what the heck is the matter with this proof. The proof, the so-called proof, claims to say that 2 equals 0 or that pi equals 0 or that the imaginary number i equals 0. All three of them. Go, f go figure. So let's take a look at this thing. For a little background into what an imaginary number is, i, imaginary number, is defined as the square root of negative 1. I'm not going to get into the real nitty gritty of how these, these numbers go about. I'm just going to kind of go fast. I'm going to assume that you already know how to work with complex numbers. I'll, I'll put a link in the sidebar for a little refresher to Wikipedia, but other than that, you're on your own. You have to recall Euler's identity. It states that e to the i x, i times x, equals cosine of x plus i sine of x. This is derived by using the Taylor series expansion of the cosine function and the sine function. And when you plug i x into the big long Taylor series, this spits out. I'm not going to get into that. I might get into that in another video. Uh, but I'm just going to assume you know what this is. So, what if x equals 2 pi? You plug 2 pi into Euler's identity, e to the 2 pi i equals cosine of 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. This simplifies because cosine of 2 pi is the same as cosine of 360 degrees which is also equal to cosine of 0 degrees, is equal to 1. The sine of 2 pi is equal to 0. So e to the 2 pi i is equal to 1. This is the base of what we're going to be working with with this invalid proof. I haven't even gotten to the invalid proof yet, but here, here it comes. Okay, so we have e to the 2 pi i equals 1. Okay, that's, that's the start. What if we take the natural logarithm of both sides? The natural logarithm of e to the 2 pi i equals the natural logarithm of 1. If we remember our logarithm rules, the exponent inside a, inside a logarithm jumps down as a coefficient to the logarithm. So this 2 pi i hops down, and you're just left with the natural logarithm of e equals the natural logarithm of 1. The natural logarithm of e is equal to 1, and the natural logarithm of 1 is equal to 0. So we have 2 pi i is equal to 0. If this were true, it would imply that either 2 equals 0, pi equals 0, or i equals 0. Obviously, this is absurd given that pi does not equal 0, 2 does not equal 0, and i does not equal 0, because it's defined as the square root of negative 1. But this is just a way of showing something that's absurd. The crux of the problem is this step right here. And it comes in because this logarithm rule only applies to real positive numbers. They have to be real and positive, or this rule does not apply. If you, you, have to, you have to know a little bit about logarithms first. There is a way to take a logarithm of a complex number, and I'm going to show you what it is. I'm not going to derive it, but I'm just going to show you what exactly it is. If you have an, a number z, it's a complex number. It has a real part a and a, an imaginary part b, being multiplied by the, the imaginary number i. It can also be written in polar form, with r being the length of the imaginary vector, and theta, or in this case it's phi, phi is the angle between the real axis and the vector itself. So this angle here is phi. This is a subscript 2. Notice how 
this imaginary I'm saying vector it's not really a vector it's just a it's just a vector representation the angle between the real axis and the vector you can go once up to it and you can go all the way back around to it they are the same angle on the imaginary plane Just keep that in mind so this is our imaginary number some arbitrary imaginary number it has a length r and an angle phi so the proper way to take a logarithm of an imaginary number this is how it's defined the logarithm of z you find it by taking the logarithm of the magnitude of z plus i times this function arg z this magnitude z is just the length of z so if you have a real part and an imaginary part it's use the Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared and then square root and then you find z this arg function returns the angle between the real the, it returns the lowest angle between z and the real axis so in this case it could be this one radian it's about one radian right here or you can go all the way around and say it equals the one radian plus another two pi radians arg returns the lowest value so in another another way to say this is the logarithm of z is equal to the Pythagorean theorem of the real and imaginary components plus i times the arctangent of b over a this would return the angle in radians so going back to this proof the proper way to take a logarithm of a complex number given this example our complex number z can be written as r times e to the i phi where r is the length and phi is the angle so r is equal to one oops move it over r is equal to one and phi is equal to two pi so we have we want to find the natural logarithm of e to the two pi i so remembering the formula from from over here right here this highlighted blue one we have the natural logarithm of z is the natural logarithm of r which is one plus i times arg two pi on a plane two pi radians is the same as zero radians so arg of two pi returns zero so the logarithm the logarithm of z looks like this the logarithm of one equals zero plus i arg two pi which is zero so you have zero plus i times zero which equals zero this is the correct way to simplify the logarithm of this number e to the 2 pi i you can't apply this rule it, it doesn't work for uh, imaginary numbers it only works for real numbers down here when if you want to work with this little part right here in the middle if there's a real number in there this rule applies but if you take the logarithm of an imaginary number you have to apply this i arg phi portion or else it doesn't work I'll go through another example say uh, say z equals 3 plus 4i r equals 4 squared plus 3 squared square root equals 5 phi equals the arctangent of 4 over 5 no oh, that's 4 over 3 I made a mistake 4 over 3 so that's 0.927 radians so then the log logarithm of z logarithm r plus i phi natural logarithm of 5 times oh, 0.927 typo simplifying we get 1.609 plus 
0.927i. That's just an example. So you can't apply the logarithm rule to imaginary numbers. You have to apply the complex logarithm rules. So Dan, I hope that helped. Um, for anyone else who has a complicated math problem, please submit your problems to me, www.alexpleasehelp.com slash online slash submit. I need your help keeping the site afloat. These videos are free of charge. I don't ever plan on charging people for them, but I do need to pay the bills somehow. So please, if you ever feel the need to buy a book through Amazon, please do so through my website. I have a little Amazon store, www.alexplacehelp.com store.